this is Dr. Shannon, and you're here with the Intersection Diverse Folks Converse. We are here in season two, episode six. The title of our episode is Your Body Can Feel Amazing Things. Andy Duran talks body sex positivity and Chabrol's fat skate sesh. We're here with Andy Duran, which we're so happy to have on the intersection. He's a good vibration sex educator and the founder of, of Chabrol's. And he is a fat, blackskin, queer, trans community organizer from Oakland, California. As an educator for 20 years, this California bear cub loves providing accessible resources and support that empowers his community. When not working, Andy can usually be found singing George Michael, love it, blushing and skateboarding around town. So hi, Andy. We're so happy to have you. Hey there. Thanks for having me. I'd love to just hear like a quick synopsis of, you know, that project and its mission. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Chub Rolls is a monthly uh, fat skate sesh um, here in the Bay Area where we get together and folks that uh, identify as fat, plus size, chubby, thick, any of those words, you know, to kind of describe themselves that are looking to learn to skate whether that be skateboarding or roller skating, can come to our group and we will teach you and get you started and you can skate with us and and uh, feel safe and comfortable in your body. So cool. I wonder, um, I'd love to hear the story of sort of how it came about. I know one of the main factors was the pandemic, right? Well, so during the pandemic, uh, a lot of people were sheltered in place, myself included. Uh, many of us were looking for ways to get back into, you know, maybe some kind of physical activity that wasn't going to be at risk for, you know, being closer than six feet uh, to somebody, uh, sure. you know, not, not going to a gym, you know, things like that. I had previously uh, had a history with skateboarding uh, in high school and in middle school, something I hadn't done in a long time. You know, I, I decided I wanted to get back into it. And I saw really, really limited information online for, uh, for fat skaters. In fact, the information I did see was really discouraging things that mm. talked about weight limits that I knew that um, skateboards that I had been on passed those weight limits and were fine. Uh, and I looked for other skaters that were maybe my size and couldn't find very many at all. So I knew that I had to not only get back into skating and kind of show people like, hey, you know, fat people can skate, but that I wanted to also create a space where fat people felt comfortable to learn to skate because uh, part of the fear of doing it is, well, am I going to get laughed at or, you know, um, are there resources available for me? Will the board break if I buy one? And so, you know, we really wanted to kind of alleviate all of those fears and just say, hey, come on out and get on a board with us or put on some skates. It's really cool because it makes me think of, you know, the vulnerability of like your story. It's just like, okay, like we're out here as this marginalized group doing this everyday thing that you don't normally see us do, right? That's different. That's a different, like more subtle kind of vulnerability. It must feel overwhelming for some members of like the group and like the workshops and you being like this mentor and guide. How do you navigate that and kind of help people through so they don't feel overwhelmed? So let's talk about the vulnerability part, which you're absolutely right. Like there's like a huge amount of, of vulnerability and uh, this kind of way to not only like individually that you might face of, can I do this? Am I yeah. worthy? Do I deserve this? And that can, you can be stuck there for years, you know, <laughs> like uh, for a long time, uh, you know, whether that's somebody figuring out whether or not they deserve pleasure or toys or, you know, romance or, you know, any of that, or somebody, you know, who wants to feel joy in moving their body um, yeah. and getting on a skateboard or, you know, getting on a bike. And I think that, um, so there's this, this kind of internal part of that. Then there's like the, any part of being seen, right? Which is like the other kind of aspect of the vulnerability and knowing that you are going to be judged. Um, but the thing that I kind of fall back to, kind of like with your, you know, bringing it circle to your fat icon shirt that you like, yeah. is 
uh, you're gonna be judged either way, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, like, with that shirt, I remember buying it and being like, oh, is this too much? Am I drawing attention to myself where people mm. are gonna, like, just, I'm inviting people to make fat jokes or something? Mm. And then I was like, they know you're fat. Like, you're fat <laughs> even without the shirt that says you're fat on it, right? Like, like it's like, <laughs> I know it. I have to remember it and be like, they if they were going to make a fat joke, they were going to make a fat mm-hmm. joke, right? Like, you know, like, but, like, my being, like, I know I'm fat and also, like, this is how I feel about my fatness. Yeah. That's the part that, you know, is yours that you can kind of – can control and kind of hold you know the the, this is how I feel about it yeah it's interesting to think about you know I'm wondering if you could talk more about this and this idea of like because the show is called the intersection the intersections of you know fatness and intersections of identity such as BIPOC trans queer and the sort of like problems that you see in representation in skating culture and then, like, maybe how the misrepresentations match your own experience or those of your members? Yeah, absolutely. I think that when uh, when you don't see folks that look like you um, in any capacity, whether that's through uh, advertisements, through social media, through uh, resources online, mm-hmm. through clothing sizes on their website, um, you immediately just get the sense that it's not meant for you. I'm curious about that as well and how this sort of translates over into good vibration, your good work with good vibrations and sex education and, you know, sex positivity and body positivity. Absolutely. Uh, I've worked with good vibrations for 17 years at this point. Wow. Um, so almost all of my adult life, um, yeah. <laughs> um, been, uh, amazing. I, I love it. I love what I do. And it's really organically kind of taught and trained me how to, uh, kind of meet people where they're at, um, yeah. to kind of see that, um, how limited the resources are that we really have, how little we know about our own bodies, how much we assume based off of what we've been told by our friends, our peers, or even in books and online, um, Hmm. and how those things have really limited us from fully embodying ourselves, fully exploring our desires, um, fully feeling safe and comfortable existing in the bodies that we have um and it's something i see and i relate to with customers every day it's something that i consider in every aspect of education and writing that i do and i was really surprised that during this period of isolation and during this period of a shelter in place where i was working from home um how much my work with chub rules felt really similar to the type of work that I was doing with Good Vibrations as far as just um, helping people feel like they could do whatever they wanted to do in the body that they had. And that if it brings them pleasure, uh, that they could uh, that they could explore that safely um, and have people support them along the way. And that's just beautiful. I mean, honestly, it's it's the good vibes experience that I was blessed to learn at an early age and am now uh, really proud to help people maintain and kind of learn to this day. Um, and something that uh, you wouldn't expect to have, uh, you know, uh, that level of uh, that ripple effect of, you know, if I'm teaching, a, you know, somebody and a parent ask me like, you know, wow, your philosophy is amazing. Where did you get that from? You wouldn't think, well, the sex toy store that I work at <laughs> you know, has really helped ingrain these values in me. But honestly, uh, um, it's it's quite true. So and, it, and it's pretty magical. I'm thinking especially for like the intersections that you work with and something that you said before in a conversation, you said that like you help people sort of take off the armor of like what they've been told they can do or can't, or you would use this phrase. And I don't know if it's something you just came up with at the time, but like one cupcake away from like not being desirable. Right. You had said something like that, which um, kind of like stuck with me and to be allowed and to like allow to be intimate with others. Right. And I wonder if you could speak more about this. How does your work 
it obviously has to do with sexuality. It has to do with intimacy. And then like the work with Chubrols has to do with embodiment, but it also has like, I feel like it has to go, it goes further than that universally. And like, how do we feel joy in our bodies, right? Like just good about our bodies, happy about our bodies. Can you talk a li- maybe a little more about that? Absolutely. Well, I think that, uh, so for the first part that you uh, kind of referenced when we were talking about uh, taking off the armor, mm-hmm. uh, that was specifically from a workshop that I had done um, for trans mask folks uh, cool. years ago. And uh, kind of talking about how, as we go throughout our day, experiencing all of this transphobia, experiencing all of this uh, kind of, um, you know, just things that are attacking us or making us kind of feel, you know, insecure in our bodies or insecure in, uh, you know, how tall we are or, you know, how how much we pass or any of these things um, that we often you come home and we don't know how to take off that armor that we had kind of placed and worn all day to kind of get us through the day. And so when we're trying to be intimate with our partners, sometimes we are in fact still very guarded and still, you know, kind of holding this weight, the shield um, that can interfere from our ability to kind of hold vulnerability. Um, And I think that that's true for so many marginalized communities, so many folks that experience, uh, you know, kind of oppression on the daily, where, you know, I know it's true for myself as a, as a fat person, you know, when the type of um, fat phobia that I experience just day in and day out from what I see on television to the internal thoughts that you may have, the thoughts of, oh, I'm just one cupcake away from not being desirable. Yeah. You know, these kind of things that can uh can shame us from joy. They literally rob us from joy. And uh, people don't really understand and realize when, or maybe they do, when they are kind of placing that shame and stigma on us, that that's what they're doing as they are attempting to rob us of the joy that we can experience in ourselves and in our bodies. Is there a way that we can like address that insidiousness, that like invisibility of fat phobia and the intersectional aspects of it as well through these like new representations that you're creating with these, like the workshop that you just talked about and then also with Chub Rolls itself? I think that so often we don't even realize that, um, how much our existence is these radical acts as well. Um, And so a huge part of the, you know, the, the success of Chub Rolls is just that it exists, you know, like that this is a group of people that meet together and skate. And it's not, it, you know, on one hand, it's not very revolutionary, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know, just a group of, of folks get together every month and like, you know, skate for a couple hours. And on the other hand, it is a, a huge radical act because of the world and the way that it's created a climate that says you can't do that. And that's what I think people don't really kind of understand is, that, you know, like, it's it's not that we are just randomly going like, yeah, we can do it. It's not, you know, that, that people are suddenly having a, uh, a pride festival for no reason or, or, you know, that people are, you know, saying like, you know, anything about their, their community, like black is beautiful or any of these things out of nowhere. Like these are in response to (laughs) the, the hatred and the ugly that we receive so regularly and it it takes such freedom and power to be able to say you know what i'm gonna live anyway i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna do this anyway i'm gonna go outside anyway <laughs> i'm gonna love anyway i'm gonna love my body anyway and so even in times where you are struggling where you maybe are like going like mm, i don't know like i'm not really feeling my hips today or whatever like because mm-hmm. it's not you know one's saying that you need to think positively out of it. It's not, that's really not how it goes. Um, You know, it's, but it does kind of help to remember that, you know, it's not just you against these internal thoughts, right? Like it's, it's you against this larger system and you're part of this kind of revolution and you can be a part of that. And I think that that's what amps me up and keeps me going is that, 
you know, I, I know the value of not only myself, but this work. I think we had talked about that before too, the kind of like responsibility that you feel like you hold as being someone who's so visible and kind of like at the forefront as like a speaker and someone who's who's facilitating these groups. But it also kind of it has to do with bravery because you're making yourself seen so other people can find you. Can you talk just like more about that, what that experience has been like for you and, and perhaps some of the members of, of your groups and workshops? Yeah, absolutely. Um, honestly, one of my first experiences where I realized how um, impactful my representation and presence was was during a workshop that I did in here in Oakland. We're out in West Oakland and I'm doing a, a workshop for these, you know, kind of uh, young adults. And mm -hmm. um, after the workshop, I had a, a, a guy come up to me, um, bigger guy, you know, and he was like, hey, um, thanks for representing for the big boys. And like, Aww. kind of, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, and I realized that what that meant to him was that like, I was a big guy out there, not only like doing cool stuff, but like talking about sex. And so, you know, in this way that was like, I know what I'm talking about and, you know, not necessarily even sexualizing me, but sure. just like feeling confident enough to, to talk about something and exist in an area that you probably have been like told that or just excluded from all yeah. this, you know, and, and just kind of what that meant to him. And it was really cool. And it really kind of stuck with me. So the last thing I'm going to ask you is something I ask everyone is I'd love to know your takeaway for this podcast, like for the conversation we've had, what is like one thing that you'll walk away with? Ooh. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that the, the thing that's been really kind of uh, amazing, and I know that it is <laughs> going to sound kind of cheesy, but just remembering and feeling the intersectionality of the work and the experience, because we are not just people in a vacuum, you know, we are not just, you know, folks that, you know, like, we can't say all lives matter because we still are excluding so many identities when we say all, right? Like yes. that's, that's, that's the reality, right? And so when we think that we are taking care of everybody, we've already lied to ourselves. And I think that what I, what I really enjoy about this work that I do and your kind of, kind of opportunity to, to talk about it is to remember that you know, that we are all kind of connected, that all of our work is really connected, that we all, you know, like you can take this and be an ally for fat people. You can take this and be, uh, you know, an ally for uh, the community that is struggling with like getting sex ed information or, or valuable resources. Like I can take this and, 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 you know, all the things that I've learned from your previous podcast episodes or the amazing people you've interviewed and connect that into my work. Like it's, this is how we grow and help our community. Like this is how we service each other. This is how we service our own kind of um, healing and our yes. own kind of uh, unlearning of the, mm -hmm. the, you know, um, the status quo and the assimilation that we've been really kind of pushed into our whole lives. Like, and, and we could really kind of see what, what this community, including all of us like have to offer. And when we're not being told to hide it. And, and building those coalitions too yeah. is so important, right? Yeah. Like this month falls on international women's day, but yeah. we're going to air your uh, show and, and people, yeah. And someone was like, well, how does Andy Duran have to do with International Women's Day? And I was like, let's think about that. Right. <laughs> and like, you know, the issues that women have with, you know, body image and like even thinking about what the categorization of, of what women means. Right. And like, you know, I just went on and on and on. And so like creating those intersections, thinking beyond just like the box of what someone says you are and how you're limited within how people see who you are, I think is like really important. Uh, so thank you so much for saying that. I just to close, I would love to hear how we can keep in touch with you, so how we can learn more about 
things that you're doing, you know, workshops, stuff with Chub Rolls, how we can support you and how the, the listeners and, and viewers of the intersection can do that uh, in terms of your projects, missions, and, uh, and goals and how we can engage more and things we can do every day, you know, to like do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can reach me through numerous ways. Chub Rolls is Chub Rolls with a Z. So that's, uh, you know, Chub like Chubby rolls like we're rolling and uh, <laughs> um, you can find us on social media um, and read about us online google us and see all of our different uh, articles and news reels that we've been part of over the last year or so um, and then through my work with good vibrations you can find us at goodvibes.com you can even contact me directly there and book 25 minute uh, virtual sessions with me if you have sex oh, cool. ed questions or looking for product advice I'm happy to support. So lots of ways to reach me and uh, follow up on all of the things that I care about, the events and workshops that I do. Um, and um, yeah. And we'll I, include the most important links in the description of you. Anchor. And so it'll be there, you know, like, I don't know, it seems like uh, Instagram is like the main shop rules. Is mm -hmm. that true? Oh, so we will include that. And then the good vibrations will include like your contact with that so people can find you um yeah i want to do a workshop with you because yeah. i've never done a sex workshop before and i feel like i've loved our conversations and i would love to sign up for one of those absolutely yeah please do we i love teaching and helping people uh you know talk about things that they feel like they're too taboo and they shouldn't be discussing so uh um, yeah yeah let's 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 get that going anytime great Okay, well, thank you so much. I I feel like this has been such a you know amazing conversation. I always love having these conversations, and like we sort of planned it, but we also didn't know where some things were going to go. And I knew from the the in person conversation that we would just be able to talk, and I feel like it went really well. And so uh, we'll just close with you know that this was season two, episode six of the Intersection Diverse Folks Converse programming made by and for queer people of color, gender non-conforming people. We are a not-for-profit project. That means that neither I nor Andy will get any funds from our GoFundMe page, which we ha will also have on YouTube uh, just to pay for production costs because it just, we're, we're doing it, uh, him and I are doing everything for free, but like I do have production costs. So that would be great, you know, just to have support from the community. So please, you know, we say we're doing it Bernie style. So even like a dollar, $3, you know, $5, something like a coffee or, well, not that you can buy a coffee for a dollar, but you know, I say Bernie style because I feel like everything counts. Uh, if you could please help us with that. The title of this episode was Your Body Can Feel Amazing Things. Andy Duran Talks Body, Sex, Positivity, and Chub Rolls Fat State Sesh. Thank you so much again, and we will see you next time. And thank you again, Andy. Thank you. Bye.